morning everybody it's a little colder out now we're on our way down to Vita Manitoba I got a step deck triaxle behind me I don't think I'm gonna need the triaxle but eh, at least I have it right it's the only step deck available I needed a step deck for this load we're gonna pick that freight up and we're gonna deliver it into rugby North Dakota today cross chained in the front to hold it in there strap down through the middle through the top and same thing in the back I'd say we're ready to rock and roll let's get out of here Everything's buttoned down tight. I've triple quadruple checked everything. I'm gonna stop down the road. Oh, hey, I replaced my hub covers finally. Are you proud of me? Hopefully they stay in there. Oh, it took a couple of weeks. I had them in my truck here. I just hadn't put them in yet. Woo, that was chilly. <laughs> yeah. Probably should've put a sweater on. Oh well, oh well. Okay, let's get moving. Delivering to a farm in North Dakota near Rugby. Trailer still attached as it should be. Wouldn't expect anything different. But you never know, you always gotta check anyway, just in case. I gotta stop somewhere and get a coffee and something to eat. Oh, I forgot to show you my new headlights. I'll have to do that next time I stop. I really like them. I think they look cool, or they look good. And they also do a much, much better job. So this load 
is about uh, the load itself is about 35,000 pounds which will put me in the ballpark of about 69 70,000 pounds gross weight once I deliver today I come straight back empty I got a load to pick up an oversized load to pick up in Winnipeg tomorrow that's gonna take me down to Wisconsin and then there's a load, a load lined up down there, tentatively. <laughs> That'll take you straight back home from there. Cavalier Z24. It was actually a good car, you know, a good car. It went a long ways for me. That was my first one. I was 16 years old then. Man, I thought I was cool. Things have changed since then. I believe yes we're gonna take North Dakota 5 highway 5 we have about another two to two and a half hours the customer knows I'm coming I'm gonna be unloading on his farm we're hoping to be able to get unloaded before the Sun goes down that'll be at about 530 and I'm hoping to get there around 4 so we'll have an hour and a half or so to so that should be enough it should all work out just fine Much 
rather live in a small town like that than a big old city where you don't even know your neighbors. A small town like this, close to a big city. How about that? And you can drive there anytime you want. You know, you can go to the hockey game, you can go to baseball game. Another delivery out to the farm. Down the gravel roads. Taking it easy. It's only about a mile, uh, three miles down the gravel road. Though not that bad. Let's take it easy. Uh, I've got those new steer tires and newer drives on, so they're picking up a lot of the rocks. You can hear it. It happened again, guys. It got dark so fast. I got here and the sun was still above the horizon. I haven't been here that long. At least it hasn't, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. I'm already empty. But it's so hard to show you guys anything is so dark right away. But I'm in the middle of a pasture, I believe. I'm a farm in North Dakota. Brought them some cattle fencing. So now they can keep their cows and they got a thousand calves just over there. Makes me hungry. So I'll show you my new headlights since it's nighttime now. Check that out. Oh, it's where it blends in. Look at this. How cool is that? I like it. So it's got the halos. Those are my running lights. And if I turn my signals on, look what happens to them. Let's put my four ways on here for you real quick. Look at that. But now my marker light over there just went out, so I have to fix that yet. Before I go, I think I got all the rest of these. And these lights are so bright. See the signal light still works well on the passenger side there. That means the signal wire and the ground are good. But the, the marker light line, I must have bumped or pulled on a little bit too hard when I was installing the lights on this side. And I probably pulled a little too, I pulled a little too hard. So I gotta fix that yet. But it's an easy fix. I don't know, what do you guys think? You guys like that halo look? I do. I just pulled off the farmer's land over there so he could go home and go to bed. I wanted to show you these lights with my better camera. This gives us a much better night shot. It's pretty bright here, right? That's just from the, the halos. be replaced soon. So we'll just focus on this light. I'll go turn on one of the signals so you can see the difference. Turn on the left signal. me so much that'll be fixed soon it's on order don't worry guys it's on order really nice guy his name was Kyle the stereotypical plains or prairie farmer just the friendliest person you could ever meet I love our farmers Oh, get out of all these layers. Oh, it's the one thing I don't like about winter. <laughs> the one thing. <laughs> the 
one of the things that I don't like about winter, not that I'm complaining, is that I have to carry around all these layers everywhere, right? So I got my winter boots on here, I got a sweater, and then I got a, my winter jacket, and then I got my big fleece winter pants. And if those aren't warm enough, then I have like my big winter coveralls yet that I wear. And then all of my face shields and face masks. Ugh, I gotta take my boots off now. It's like I'm dissembling, disassembling my leg or something. Okay, there you go. Ah, okay. They're really warm. I get, uh, these are my winter shoes that I wear. They're uh, workwear, I got them from Mark's Work Warehouse. And they're waterproof, really warm, but don't wear them in summer because they're really warm. Your feet will get uncomfortably hot. I wear these. These are my other new shoes. I can just actually got these. Uh, these are Dakota brand, fitting as we're in North Dakota right now. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm, I know you get it. I'm showing you my shoes, okay? They're blue. Look, they're blue. Of course they are. Those are the shoes that I wear in and out of the truck stops, uh, when there's pavement, when there's not a lot of deep snow, and when it's not too cold. Because those shoes, your feet will get cold in, even with wool socks. They breathe very well, so your feet won't sweat. Whereas in these shoes, you wear them for long enough, your feet will sweat, and they'll stink. But, your feet will be warm and dry. Alright, let's get some paperwork all organized here. Then I'm going to head back to Winnipeg. Uh, i got to drop this trailer off in our yard, pick up a different step deck, one of those lower deck ones. Uh, we call them boat trailers. One of the lower ones, i got to pick up that because I have an oversized load to pick up in Winnipeg tomorrow. That's going to take me to Wisconsin. That should be fun. Let me clean things up a bit here and we'll go. And just to give you an idea of how bright these lights are, those are just those running lights, right? I'll turn on my dims. And my high beams. Kapow! I love it. Going back through Cavalier, North Dakota now at night. And they got all this garland and wreaths lit up. In 200 meters, slide left on Division Avenue, ND18. So this town does Christmas right. Look at that big Christmas tree off the side there. Every lamppost has one too. Wait. This door has been giving me issues too. Uh, Alright, let's turn on all our lights. There we go, so we can see what we're doing. Uh, no, I want to use one of these, these pairs of gloves. Let's see, because they're insulated a little bit. Yeah. Well. I'm gonna leave this trailer here. I was supposed to pick up what we call a boat trailer. Like I was telling you earlier, it's a it's a step deck, but it's got a lower drop than our other step decks, right? I need one of those for my load tomorrow because it's an oversized load and I need the lower deck. I'm not seeing any anywhere. Like this is a boat trailer here, but it's red tagged. So I can't take this one, right? This one right here has got a red tag on it. And that is because this one has a broken uh, airbag mount under there. So definitely can't take this one. But that's a boat trailer, so it has a little bit of a poof. Whereas where's an example of a regular step deck? I don't see one, ah, way out there, but the fisheye lens, will, you probably won't be able to tell. It's not quite as low, right? Ah. I'm so glad my bunk heater is working now. I forget if I tell, told the vlog already or not, but uh, this weekend in the shop, I ran straight kerosene through it for a few hours on high. I was told by Google and by the internet that if I want to fix my soot problem inside my bunk heater, I should run it on high for a few hours just on straight pure kerosene. So what I did was I found out where the, where the pump was taking diesel fuel out of my tank, it's on the driver's side. I took it off the fuel tank and I dipped it into a jar of kerosene and I cranked her up and I let her run for like three hours. And now it's running just fine. 
So now I don't gotta get it fixed. So it did work. Google was right. If you're wondering how to clean the soot out of your bunk heater, you should be doing this regularly from what I've heard. Hear it running now? That sounds good and healthy and no smoke. And you see that solved my problem. Just burning it for three hours on kerosene. If you do that every three months, even every year, once a year, crank her up on straight kerosene, that's supposed to keep it clean. So that's something I'm gonna do regularly, if not every quarter, every six months, like every three to six months, just to keep that thing clean. Kerosene burns a lot hotter than uh, diesel fuel, right? And you let it run on high to burn off all the soot on the burner inside of there. I don't know all the science of it, but Google was right, it worked. So if you're wondering, it worked. Saved me some money, <laughs> a few hundred dollars at least. And all it cost me was a $20, $20 jug of kerosene and I only used half of it. So $10 of kerosene, fixed a few hundred dollar problem. So, uh, let's get rid of this trailer. And I'll do a loop around the yard to see if I can find a boat trailer, but I didn't see one. Oh, this is one of these, kind of likes to groan. I know, I know, you're sad to see me go. It's crying, I know. Let it out. Let it out. Cry all you want. Still gonna drop you right here. Tarps off here yet too. <sighs> there, my bar. Like, I can't believe how well that worked. I kind of had my doubts. I was like, "Oh, this can't work." <laughs> Very happy. Very happy. And I think next weekend, just to be safe. I'm going to do it on another cycle of kerosene. I'm going to do it again just to extra clean it. Because it's obviously been so long since this thing's been serviced. That bunk heater. It's a uh, Airtronic. That's the uh, brand name. I should have loosened this earlier before I got in here. That's There we go. And the thing fires up now, right away, first try. I can't get over that, I mean, definitely hashtag impress. Oh, the flatbed life. All these dry van drivers, you know, they're looking at me right now. And all they do is they pull in roll down the dollies, pull the pin, take the airlines off and drive away. Just drop the trailer and go. Not so for the life of a flatbedder. <sighs> Got straps to roll up. I have a little thingy that rolls it up faster, but this is just a short one. That'll be fine. So. that there. Just pull this out because I'm going to be using this. So I have two end tarps and one center tarp. The way I tell them apart when they're rolled up is the center tarp I put three bungees on. The end tarps I just put two bungees on. That's how I always know which one's my center tarp and I don't unravel this whole thing just to find out it doesn't have an end flap on it. That's annoying. Roll it all the way back up for no reason. Oh, I'm gonna be buying new tarps within the year, hopefully. They'll be blue again. But for now, these are holding out. 
Still got a pretty good patch kit for them. These tarps all together are about 230 pounds. Plus all the snow and ice and water that gets stuck in them. It's probably like, oh, 240, 250 pounds. I got this little guy here. I'm just gonna tie them right on here. That way, just in case if I need to go and bobtail somewhere in the morning, then I don't gotta worry about tying them down then, right? So what I do is I take this, toss it over, fail. What I do then is toss that over there like that. Walk around to the other side. Ah, the yard's quiet tonight. Take it from here and hook it onto my frame under there. Those tarps stay very close to me all the time. This side onto this side of the frame. Give it a few cranks. Like that. Wrap up the rest of this. Just gotta release that pin on there yet. Oh. Underneath here, the last thing I do. We are now decoupled. And this truck and trailer are about to have a divorce and separate. They've been married all day. I'm gonna go and do a little bit of a roll around the yard. Look for a trailer, and if I don't find one, I'm just gonna park somewhere in the yard. Everybody gets into the office at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Well, everybody gets 7 to 7.30 a.m. they get here. And we'll figure it out then if I can't find one. Got my trailer, I roll this window down. I roll forward just an inch, just to get out of the, the pin lock there. Just a touch, but I don't go out from under the trailer yet. Just like that, and then I set the trailer down. That's what I call it. I take the uh, the air out of my airbags in my truck. I lower the back end of my truck. That sets the trailer down nice and easy, and then roll out. And it doesn't go kathunk on you. But then you stop. You wait for the airbags to inflate again. You don't want to drive very far at all with those airbags deflated. Especially with mine, I got those half fenders and I don't want those half fenders to rub on my tires. They don't, but you know, they're very, very close. All right, ready? Turn our load lamps off. Off we go. So, oh, there's somebody there. Is that a boat trailer? Nope, that's a flatbed. Oh, hey, good day, sir. That's Brian. Well, good day. What are you doing up so late? Oh, you know, just got back from home. You know, gotta grab our yet and go to Brandon, apparently. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You like my new headlights? Let me see how it looks. Nice. Oh, that's fancy. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> those are nice. How much do those cost? 179 bucks on Amazon for all four. No, oh, come on, really? Yeah, they're bright too. Now they do look like they're nice and bright, and then with those heels like that, oh, 
Brian is one of my good work buddies here. He drives uh, that Kenworth W900 that uh, I used to drive back when I first started making vlogs in 2011. Now uh, those videos of me driving that exact truck are on my channel. Uh, go into my playlist to the very beginning, as far back as you can go, you'll see me driving that truck. Uh, it's, it's a good truck. And now I have a very similar truck. But that is the truck that made me fall in love with Kenworth W900s. I mean, I already liked them, but it was always up in the air for me, you know, between the Peterbilt 379, 389, and the Kenworth W900, and then I got into that truck. And ever since then, I've been a, just a diehard W900 guy. That doesn't mean that the, the 389s and 379s aren't nice, too, in their own way. They're beautiful trucks. I'd love to drive one. would never complain about driving one. But for me personally, I'll always take the W900. And, uh... Yeah, living the dream here. And uh, so we're parked here at work. Uh, Brian's here as well, too. Parked down over there. He's going to sleep here as well. He's got to head west tomorrow, and I've got to head south. The only thing is, there's no trailer here for me. There's no trailers at all. Like, any step decks whatsoever, except for the one that I brought back, unless they want me to take that rental, the, the triaxle. But from the sounds of it, like the load I need to pick up tomorrow morning, I need a specific trailer, a type of trailer that we have, and there's none in the yard. So maybe they have something in mind. Maybe one is coming in tomorrow morning. I don't know how early I have to be there to load. I don't know when I have to deliver. All I know is I'm picking up in Winnipeg. It's oversized and it's going to Wisconsin. And I need a specific trailer for it with a low deck. That's all I know. So I'm going to bed right here. I'll figure it out in the morning. Thanks for joining me today. I'm tired. It's time to wrap this up. So remember, drive safe out there. One second. Oh, I was trying to hold it back until after. Oh, but I couldn't. I can't hide it, guys. I'm tired. And that's why I'm going to bed. Makes sense. So remember, guys, when you're on the road, drive safe. Please, uh, just take the extra time. Look one more time before changing lanes, before crossing traffic. Keep your stick on the ice, and that means uh, that's sort of Canadian for be ready for anything. Be prepared. And let's all try to get home to our families. I'll see you tomorrow.